you know when that happens yeah you kind of like start to question god As I, I could tell you just didn't know like didn't know something hit it. your heart there but it's like a doubt came but there was like a common common hatred towards islam but it just it didn't hit as I thought it would have at yeah. the time. Looked at it like this, yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, was like I was laughing in it, yeah. Because yeah, it was just a bit of nerves and that, yeah. I was like, so man's Muslim, innit? Why don't I just become Muslim? And then the shaitan got to me and was like, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who are you telling me, bro? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa mahratu. Come on. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. That's my favorite thing of the podcast. Not talking, not anything, not getting yeah. to these juicy discussions, not you sipping on your <laughs> cappuccino yeah. that you you know already sipped on. Yeah. It's that wa mahratu. Astaghfirullah, I've got the pronunciation wrong. <laughs> nah, bro, you, you actually it. got it on point, bro. Oh, you need to start saying you're getting it on point, bro. <laughs> I know, maybe next week or two weeks' time, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. But yeah, how's your week been? Um, up until now, pretty good. Yeah. Actually, no, I can't even say that. We've had technical errors this entire week. Yeah. Starting from our podcast went to release on Thursday, 7 p.m. Yeah. End up releasing Sunday mid- <laughs> <laughs> midnight. Just te- technical errors, something that no one can control, and it's something yeah. that. It's just weird. And then today, and we were recorded half an hour of this episode. It was a juicy. Juicy. It was good, yeah. Yeah, it was solid, man. I looked back at the laptop, yeah, and it, and it says, start recording. Yeah. Yeah, and then I looked at, into it, only like 40 seconds of the audio was recorded. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. That was yeah. crazy. So and we just been plagued is, with this stuff. You know what is? You looked at it twice as well, in it, and I looked to you, look at it, and I was thinking, okay, cool, there's nothing, there's yeah. no problems. Like, I heard sounds from yeah. the... The windows and that but yeah. i was thinking that's just like regular you'll just get random but then after i come back here i bring it get a charger for the phone and there's like it's not recording i'm like it's mad, there's bad there's bare problems in the last like two weeks there's been mad problems for the podcast but Allah, but, it? Allah, Allah. Yeah, but alhamdulillah we're still here inshallah we'll continue to provide you know yeah. good quality inshallah, you get what i mean inshallah. you know juicy you know get into the nitty-gritty of these kind of um topics as well but what you went somewhere the other day? Can you can you tell the the people there? Talking about the golf, yeah, top golf, yeah. So I went top golf, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like a B tech top golf. I don't know what exactly the finger school. Remember, it's in Wembley. It's don't ask me how I know that. Yeah, how, the do, you snap know, maps. how do you know it's in Wembley? You snap check the snap maps. maps yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who, when do you check? I checked um, Sammy's snap map. Snap, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, was this yesterday, Saturday? Whenever you went in it, yeah, Saturday. Yeah. So um, it's like a B tech one, mm. um, but bro, it's only like three seventy five. For one session, which is very solid, um, but it's my first time. These men, I'm going for six, seven times here, yeah? and all yeah. I'm gonna say this brother's got power in his shoulders, yeah. Because yeah. my first hit, my first few hits, I got 170. Yeah. Beat the personal record of all these guys. What's, so what's you might fix what, up. What was the personal record? I think 10. I got 150 before. 150. You know? The thing is, I don't have good technique because my first time. I was yeah. learning how to do it. Hey, you should get me on it, bro. We'll get you on it, bro. Yeah. I think probably in like two years' time. Can't can't have no motives yeah. at least two years. <laughs> yeah. From what I know, it's yeah. 10. I was. The best. Everyone yeah. told me Tina was the best. Then they said um, Nadim second best. Then it's Rajiv. Then it's Sammy. Yeah. Oh, okay. These are our friends, by the way. Yeah. And then so I was like, Yo, let me get it. The first few I missed. You know, you're just getting used to it. And then I hit. Like, what like missed completely? The ball. Yeah, it happens. It happens. It happens. It happens <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, then I got one fifty. Then I got one seventy. Yeah. I have no technique, but like I had decent like power in my arms, so I managed to make it go. Um, it was calm. It was calm. Yeah. I felt a little bit guilty because I'm on this entire self improvement thing. So whenever I'm on a motive now and I'm like chilling, I feel like you feel guilty. Yeah. Should I be doing this? I don't think so. And especially because the pod you were editing at the time, yeah, we had bad issues with it. I was like, I shouldn't really be here, but I was kind of forced to, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I know why you're forced. Yeah, to. <laughs> yeah, long day, man. Mad thing. You know what it is? Yeah, it's like you c- you can have these kind of like days where you you enjoy yourself, or even it was a couple hours as well. Like I don't think you should. You should feel guilty yeah, kind of right, thing. Yeah. Like if they're a regular current and you're like stopping like other stuff from following through, but you've done yeah. everything that you could have done for the podcast. You've got, done everything for the week. It's a, it's a time to chill. Like tomorrow we've got another motive. You know, you see me, yeah, you even said on the group chat, yeah, you managed to convince Pablo Man to come. Because yeah, yeah. I never go on motives. But I've been on Eid motive, business meeting, but it, I, I wouldn't know. That's when. not a motive. That's not a motive. Business I see it as a motive because we're like, we're, you, we're in there, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. chilling. But 
Uh, before that, yeah, I haven't been on a motive. Like one of my boys, like, yo, let's let's link up, let's link up for like three, four weeks. Yeah, I haven't linked up with him because I've just been so busy. So like, busy, yeah. Like I would say, oh, okay, cool. Tuesday, then Tuesday something happens. Then okay, cool. Wednesday, then yeah. Wednesday we have to record, and then it's just you know, it's not even like you, you try not to do stuff. It's just you're just literally busy. And when you go on that motive, you know, for example, look, if we go on a three-hour motive now, but you can make clips on that time. You could edit a pod. We could look for. Stuff on Maruj, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, someone guessed it, you know, that's mad. Someone guessed it right. But you know what? It, it, like, you know what? When it when it comes out, it comes when out. When it comes out, inshallah. Yeah. Um, but bro, how's your week? My week has just been trying to sort out the podcast. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> with the podcast, yeah. Um, there were so many issues with it. Like, So I, I tried to edit it. I, you know what? It's my fault because we record on Sunday, innit? Yeah. But... Um, I didn't start editing till Monday night. Yeah. And then Monday night came about and I started recording. I started editing. Problems, problems. And I texted you, texted you. Then Tuesday, those problems. Then you're like, do it on this app, yeah? So I did it on this app, yeah? Then I released it Thursday morning, yeah? <laughs> and then there was just bare issues. Bare, I was yeah, thinking, yeah. do you know yeah. what is? I kept changing it, changing it. But then when you go over it, I kept changing it. It messes up somewhere else. It, yeah, it, messes, yeah. it kept messing up somewhere else. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know what? Yeah. I just <laughs> sent it. Then you're like, no, we can't. Because it'll ruin our rep, of course. So I was like, yeah. cool. Then you try to edit it. Because I think wasn't working on my PC. First day, yeah. first I, was, I had a whole like 12 hour shift basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I had a one hour break here and there. But it was basically 12 hours. Then the next day, Friday, still basically had a 12 yeah. hour shift as well. Yeah. So it was it's quite difficult. Then I had to do it Friday evening or Saturday evening actually. And then it released. So, you know, alhamdulillah, we released it. And then uh, th- that meant I couldn't launch my FOB business and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like comp- um, website and stuff. But inshallah, by next week, inshallah. I'll, I'll try and get it sorted. I just need to literally get the website. I've got everything patterned. Just the website. Just the website. And I feel like that could be done in about two three hours so it's gone yeah okay so yeah that's my week you know what we both had pretty hectic weeks yeah from that for many different reasons <laughs> many different reasons bro but let's just get into the main uh, yeah. topic of this episode yeah? yeah and it's about your reversion story yeah so alhamdulillah i've known you for like 10 years now yeah and mixed f- through those 10 years in different phases yeah when we first met each other we're ops. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell the people then what you call me? I used to call him Igor. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought you were Eastern European at the time. Maybe yeah. I thought I was trying to be funny. Yeah. Obviously, you know when you're in year seven, you're just trying to... Bro, I'm some go- shy kid as well. Yeah, I'm like... Like I probably cried at home yeah, when he said it, bro. I was trying I mean? to make people laugh, innit? Yeah. I was trying to make them. I said, "Yo, look, be friends with me." I was just trying to make them laugh, and I just called the ego. Yeah. Kind of like Ali was that like, on violence back in the day. Yeah. And then obviously we had that point where we were like, um. We're cordial. We're cordial with each other. And then we became close friends, now business partners. Yeah. yeah. So we've had different stages of our friendship. And also in our friendship, I've seen different states of Pablo. Yeah, it's crazy. So I saw agnostic atheist Pablo yeah. go to a kind of more devout Catholic Pablo, then go to like a Unitarian type of Pablo. And yeah. then finally, Alhamdulillah Islam. The final stage. Yeah. So obviously, this pod's going to mostly be about your journey, yeah. but also just want to know about your childhood, your upbringing, yeah. and how that kind of crafted into you eventually turning Muslim. All right. So for those that don't know, you probably all do, is that, you know, I was born to an Italian family, Catholic, used to go to church every week, you know, do all the, whole, the Holy Communion thing, eat the bread, drink the wine, you know, that, that thing that do at um, churches, um, baptize, you know, all that, all that yeah. stuff you do as a, as a devout Catholic in it. So yeah, I, I was, I'd say until maybe 10, 11, yeah, at the end of primary school, I was very devout in Catholicism because the family I came through and also the family in Italy, just all, you know, all the influences around. But then, you know, a tragedy hits my family, you know, my mother passes away, you know, by the end of primary school times. And, you know, when that happens, yeah, you kind of like start to question God, especially my father, yeah, he started to question like, yo, why, why this happened to me? Why has it not happened to anyone else? Why am I left with, you know, no wife and whatnot? So it's like these questions start to play on you, play on you, play on you. And then eventually you start to question God. Then you start, does he actually exist? Then if, and he even said that back in the day, he used to have a lot of doubts about God. Like he'd believe he'll do everything, but he had a little doubt there. And I feel like after that year, that doubt like grew, grew, grew. 
and then you know his influence kind of went on to me and then I, and then you, you hear oh why does god do this why does god do that so i start to think like that like why why did god like you know let my mother pass away and no one else's not in like a sadistic kind of sense yeah but like in a sense like so i look at everyone else and yeah look at they me. Ha- they're they're happy with their two parents me i'm here do you get with, with my solitary parent do you get what i mean so that's what happens in it so i was you know atheist and they leave kind of a sour kind of bitter taste towards god yeah exactly you'll think and towards religion like i i'll I'll be real for the first from secondary school for the first couple years in secondary school after year nine i used to actually hate christianity over everything because christianity is where i came from so i was hating why people believe in this and i i used to be part of a friendship group a lot of them a lot were christian and that and they used to try say oh or there's a reason why she died this whatever i was thinking no like how can it be a reason do you get what i mean so there was a so there was a lot of hatred towards christianity and a lot of you know resentment in my heart because i was thinking why this happened to me but then after you know what um i was friends with um this christian a different type of you know because we were both in that same friendship group here but he kind of left it and I kind of left it as well because it was it, we're all going like different directions and yeah. that. Do you get what I mean? So yeah, me and him became friends in it. Quite close friends and whatnot, yeah. So then after he, because he was very Christian in it and he comes, so um, he was very Christian. So, and he kind of influenced me. So we're like, cool, you know, start, you know, looking into Christianity more, start understanding the religion more. Yeah. St- you know, you start, understand okay god does exist kind of thing like because of that influence and stuff but uh, so obviously you were agnostic atheist um because of the trauma that was kind of brought around around the situation around your mum. yeah and you just hated religion what about being around him kind of made you believe like believe there is a god and start to develop that love for christianity again do you know i think it was the thing that okay i was born into a christian family like it kind of brought me back to like before your roots yeah it, yeah it how to it brought me back to before my mother passed away like church christianity the love of jesus the love of god all these kind of things come in and, and there was like an emotional like kind of like could you say it reminded you of your mum? kind of like those habits that you used to do with your mum. you're now doing them nah i wouldn't well. say like that i'd say it was like in a sense that it brought me back to the childhood where i was i was christian and he was christian and yeah. it was that kind of yeah. like that kind of familiarity yeah, fam- yeah familiarity so yeah so i was thinking okay cool um we got back into it i looked into it more and i was thinking yeah christianity is for me and also the thing is with because remember this individual yeah hated islam <laughs> yeah and for those that don't know we're not gonna you know say no names or nothing but he came from a muslim majority country where in a in that time period gcse times there was a lot of um violence against violence christians. Towards christians yeah, yeah. you would hear every week every month whatever oh a church got shot up oh these these children in a bus who are christian go to the monastery they got shot up oh this happened that happened so you start to understand and so there was like a common common hatred towards islam and that's because you know what you see the media yeah and they say oh islam is this islam is that I'm thinking, bro, it's a religion full of crazy people. Do you get what I mean? Trying to kill us and like, do you get what I mean? And you got people on the street saying, Sharia law, Sharia law. And then you you see some picture of like someone like, um, like a a woman in like a niqab and then a guy like wearing a white bearded guy, big bearded guy. Yeah. Yeah, You're thinking like, is this where my country is going? Do you get what I mean? So yeah, that whole thing about, you know, Christianity brought back and like kind of the good side of Christianity was brought back. So I was like, you know i got back into christianity and after that year we went our like separate ways kind of thing you went to another sixth form i went to the same sixth form and so that was a, the, the penny dropped in year 11 yeah and i was thinking why am i hating on islam like there should no be no logical reason for me yeah. to hate in islam it's a religion everyone believes in it the same way i believe in christianity people believe in islam so i feel like that was the first step towards like you know me becoming muslim i also think a lot of the arguments you were taught at the time because i used to i used to sit next to you guys maths yeah and hear what he'd be saying to you and in my head i would just be like what is this guy telling him stuff like oh you you guys force converted 
Christians in yeah. my particular country, yeah. I mean, we can mention the country Egypt. Egypt, yeah. Anyone who knows the history of Egypt knows it took around seven to eight hundred years for Egypt to even become majority Muslim mm-hmm. after the Muslims had conquered it for seven eight hundred years, yeah. So I was like, what? Like, what's going on? Like, I can understand the emotional element where your people are being persecuted in at a, that moment. At that moment, and yeah. I get look emotionally, it will get to you. And I'm pretty sure, like, if in my country I was we were being persecuted by another religious religious group, there'll be a little bit of hatred towards them. Mm-hmm. And I understand that, but it's when that emotion leads you to blind hatred, and it leads you to kind of distort reality of how history actually worked. Where yeah, I think Muslims, bro, like I'm saying this right now as a statement. Yeah, Wallahi, like Muslims are the most accepting throughout history of other religions right 100% um, if you look at like m- most Muslim countries they had big populations of Christian Jews if you look at my case obviously Pakistan Mughal came from Mughal India yeah. it was majority Hindu and I feel like right now because of a uh, situation that the Muslim Ummah is in right now mm-hmm. where we're in a state of hardship and when you're in a state of hardship these extremist groups kind of rise and I think it's just given Islam a bad image when all we should do is stop looking at the actions of a few people and look at the scripture and what does Allah and his prophet say that's the thing When you see Islam When you actually look it up Islam is perfect Muslims are far from perfect Far you know from I mean? perfect yeah. So Yeah And you can kind of understand I'm not justifying his hatred But you can understand like Okay cool He's the minority in the country He's seen Muslims killing his people Keep speaking Yeah keep um, Killing his people for Years and years and years And especially that time period Yeah Where it became crazy Like 2016 to 2017 yeah there was like you would see literally a terrorist attack against a christian or christians like nearly every week yeah 100 percent every month but nearly every week kind of thing so yeah he um you know he also put like ideas of anti you know islam into my head like oh islam is this islam is that so then like i started to hate islam in it and i would think oh it's a plus culminating with the whole fact that you know the media would hate on islam as well so these all combined to me to you know hate on islam a lot and that's where me and ali kind of because we me and ali became um not friends but we were just cordial in the sense that because we were in quite a few classes math science and uh english english yeah and business and and um uh, RS RS as well So we were We there were, we were there a lot And because you were The most vocal Muslim there Yeah I used to ask you Questions And and there weren't Questions in the sense Oh Like what's Tawheed It would be yeah, yeah. question. It would be like a very The social elements Yeah nah, Yeah social element But it also be like I remember one time I was like Oh do Muslims grow up To hate like Jews and yeah, Christians yeah, yeah, Like yeah. it'd be Questions To try and like Attack you But they'll be subtle Do you get what I mean Like so I used to always ask these questions, ask these questions, yeah. And then, yeah, there was just like a lot of like anti-Islamic rhetoric, you know, that I had. And, but I used to notice that a lot, like, I used to be sitting next to you. And my main thing is I thought Mick, you were just a victim of his like um, hate. Brainwashing, was, yeah. His bra- like, you know what's funny? You probably thought we were being brainwashed. But in my reality, I used to see it like, why is this guy brainwashing him? It just lies. Because yeah. I know what Islam is. I'm not saying I'm an educated person, but I've read up on, I've read books about Islamic history and whatever, and how lies were just being spread. Yeah, I was so like, and how, for example, certain things like the Prophet used to do this, the Prophet used to do that. Like, but I got told by this guy, the Prophet used to beat his wives. Now, Stop anyone, there's an explicit hadith where Aisha radiallahu and radiallahu anha says, yeah, she's like, the Prophet ﷺ never hit a servant. He never hit. Um, a slave he never hit any of any single female in his life yeah the only time he ever hit someone was in war obviously in war bro you attack yeah, you have to fight. you have to attack and when i used to hear stuff like that and mm-hmm. people the sahabi said the prophet sallam he was so gentle but in the warrior but in war he was fierce right so when you hear stuff like this and someone then saying he's doing this he's doing that i'm like it's spreading lies and i kind of saw that you've been kind of like lied to by him and i yeah. thought it was, i don't know what it was yeah i will lie i was not trying to revert you i thought it was like my duty to tell you the truth about to, this. to try clean that clean like, up those misconceptions yeah. my goal was never to like for you to see the truth in it it's yeah. just like bro by the way what he told you was lies yeah and i feel like you did bring that and more when we used to go on our famous walks in yeah. year 12 the three four five hour walks bro, bro. we'd go around the whole area yeah. bruv like yeah. and it was not just one walk it was like multiple times multiple times yeah it was crazy and you know what we used to schedule as well <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. But saturday yeah. this time yeah, we'll yeah. be there but sometimes you're like oh i can't do this day oh, i can't do that day so we'd like schedule, schedule around yeah, it. different days it have to be once a yeah. week bruv yeah and i feel like 
because of that, yeah, you we didn't even actually talk about dawa a lot. You didn't like try to proselytize me. All you did was we actually all we did was talk about Islamic history because I came from a not a background, but like I was doing history at A levels and I was thinking to do it in uni. for my degree, yeah, for yeah. uni, yeah. And I was I wanted to understand Islamic history because I was thinking, how did everyone convert? How did it become so big? Fruit, and then you used to explain, oh, they did this, they did that. And I was thinking like, and I, was, I remember I asked you, yeah, and I remember this specific, where the specific location of it, yeah, I was asking like, how did, you know, people in like Indonesia or like in a country that didn't get direct contact by Muslim armies become Muslim and how did it grow and whatnot? And you're telling me, oh, they would send, slowly send this, slowly do that. Slowly trade and trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was like, it was very fascinating Islamic history. And that made me want to look into Islam. Islamic history more 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 and then because that kind of love for Islamic history yeah I kind of wanted to understand Islam more because I was thinking how are so many people converting in these areas by indirect contact yeah it sounds like the throughout history even now it sounds the most successful evangelical religion in terms yeah. of like but even look at now how many people revert we know how many people in our own personal friendship group have converted to Islam from 2022 yeah from my conversion got one literally a month later that we'll see tomorrow then we got um some two people in the space in the last ramadan then someone just after ramadan no and then um a couple more people you probably couple know more stuff people, like yeah. that yeah, yeah so it's crazy just how and then i've also had other non-muslim people tell me i'm on my journey i'm trying to find right now progressing right yeah so like it's just beautiful how bro like this is conception that islam got spread by the sword but we have a real case study in front of you right now islam is spreading like crazy right now yeah andrew tate sneeko some people are reverting to it and even you know people like tommy robinson right i saw something about him he said he said islam is the biggest problem he said recently on a pod he said look i still don't i'm not on good terms with the religion i disagree with a lot of what they say but he said it's not the biggest problem now he said i, f- I actually think muslims and christians should unite together yeah so you know how he's even changing his stances around islam that was us though in uh year 12 year 13 we're like yeah. the biggest problem is not islam or christianity it's it's atheism and all this madness that's agnosticism happening. and all this degeneracy, degeneracy yeah. yeah that's happening in um the west like the common and en- not common enemy because it sounds mad but the common like enemy of these religions is you know secularism atheism agnosticism I mean, me you and joel we always used to say that bro yeah we're like we should not be christians or muslims should we should not, not be, not be fighting, fighting each other, other. Yeah. exactly bro we should not be f- oh islam is this islam is that or christianity is this. no we should say the, these atheists are trying to you know destroy christianity this oh they've nearly destroyed it i i've been i was christian and even when i was christian myself i was saying these are destroying they're destroying religion. they're getting they're destroying religion and they're trying to destroy islam you see what they're doing yeah. in like up north with you because you see manchester and birmingham full of like muslims and that yeah. yeah you see what they're doing to the schools and that yeah to the kids it's mad so yeah, yeah so we used to go on these walks and because then you know what i was friends with you like individually then you introduced me to your friendship group and you know there was another muslim brother there by the name of sammy you two interacting and like just the co- the way i saw the culture and the brotherhood and stuff i was like you know what i want i wanted something like this in christianity in something sense. little like bro like sal- even saying salam salam like, alaikum like even like, i've always made sure like if i have a muslim friend we say give him salam yeah even little stuff like jazakallah show manners in an islamic way mm-hmm. and i feel like something i don't really deep or me and some of the muslim brothers you know we don't deep here but when you're sat next to each other and you're opening iftar together it's like brotherhood isn't it? it's beautiful yeah. it's beautiful subhanallah for it and so yeah and also you know like you as you said words like you say inshallah mashallah like these words i wanted it in christianity like i wanted like a un- unification kind yeah, of, yeah like oh we have a common language which for muslims was arabic, arabic i wanted yeah like latin common like yeah. for you know my christian brothers but it, it just wasn't there in it yeah. kind of thing so i'd see you guys and i'd like you know what and then i'd ask questions but these times when i'd ask the questions it would actually be like serious questions not like a thing where i was trying to be like antagonizing antagonizing i was actually like trying to understand it yeah and i remember like we we're on a walk one time yeah and then we we're, were debating and this time we rarely debated actually but this time we were debating and i was trying to debate the trinity but it just didn't work like it just didn't like I was trying to say something, but I couldn't. Like, I, something got over me. Like, how can I defend this? Like, I think even in that moment, I remember. I remember. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I said the Bible quote where Jesus says, "No one knows of the hour except the Father." Yeah, yeah. Not the angels. No one. So I remember I explained that to you, and I remember like 
you weren't speechless. Like, I think you said something back, but I could tell in that moment. It was a, ba- it was a bad response as well. Like it was probably some weak argument. I, ca- I can't even remember, but I remember in the moment you looked at me and you're like, like I, I could tell you just didn't know. Like didn't know something hit it. your heart there, but it's like a doubt came. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you have something so explicit like that, you're like, how is he God then? Yeah. If, if he doesn't know where the day of judgment is, so how am I worshipping him yeah. when there's someone greater than him, which is the father, which we believe is Allah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, that I think that development where I saw you become from a I never expected you to become Muslim, but yeah. I think the moment where I made dua for it is when you know when you became from Trinitarian to Unitarian. Yeah. I was like, rah, like there's hope there, and that's when I made dua. And I think what I really admired about you is I'll talk to other Christians about this because I had some Christians back in school trying to convert me, yeah, to become a Christian. I know who exactly you know, you're talking about. I remember bro. them telling you, oh, you're good with debating, you should become a Christian, yeah. yeah. Then you, <laughs> I, remember, I literally I remember them saying, you're good at debating, you should become a Christian, yeah. And then when they said that to me, I was like, what is going on? But I remember with you, I used to say arguments, and you actually used to think about it, not like other people that you tried to like. I don't know, other people just spurring on stuff for try, the sake of try, it. Try to just argue for the sake of it. I tried yeah. to, you know what, it's, I don't know, maybe it's the way I've made, but I'm I'm very open to new ideas. Like yeah. I have my stance on stuff, but I'm open to understanding new people's 100%. ideas I've and perspectives. Yeah. So, yeah. But we, we had debates, not a lot, but we did here and there. And it just got to a point that time where I was like, I can't debate this. Do you get what I mean? Even like the other few debates that we did have, yeah, it was mostly about Islamic history we're talking about. But I, I was thinking like, how do I how do I debate this? How do I debate this? And you know, when in your heart you realize like, well, like, like I can't go anywhere. I can't, yeah. I, this is a lie, bro. Do you get what I mean? So yeah. like, so then what happened next year is that I remember so I think it was like either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, yeah. Like, um, I don't know when it was, yeah. But you know, we had that debate. Then went over, you know. Then the next day or two days after, whenever we went to school, I remember I was there. I remember this. Ex- I was, you know, in the library. Yeah, there's those bookshelves. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the all the man them came here, yeah, and I was like, I was debating Emmanuel. Yeah. And then I was waiting for you. Yeah. And then you came. I was like, bro, I'm Unitarian. I can't be a Trinitarian yeah, yeah, yeah. anymore. I was yeah. so happy when I heard that. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then Joel was there as well. And he was like, yeah, like, because he's been trying to debate it with me as well to get me from Trinitarian to Unitarian. But it just like didn't really work kind of thing because the arguments he came up with was like still Trinitarian. But it was, it was I don't know, it was it, it just didn't go through to me. You know, it's all up to Allah because of that. So, yeah. So then after for the next year or so, I was just, you know, you know, we were just, I just wasn't really like Muslim. I wasn't Muslim, of course, in it, but we're just talk about Islam and I'd ask questions and I'd see things and I'd, you know, and then I remember it was lockdown Ramadan, yeah. And then he was like, oh, eat dates because it's Sunnah, isn't it? <laughs> then, you hey, know PS4 what? party. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, PS4 party, yeah. And then two weeks later, yeah, I was like, oh, Sammy, did you eat your dates? I like, no, it's like, bro, it's Sunnah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I searched up what Sunnah meant, in it, And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. Something the prophet does. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, so. those things, yeah, it's like, those words and whatever like it was like a whole culture around it that i liked in it so then um year one of uni comes around yeah and i'd say yeah you you know and the man them know i was i was probably in a state of depression i'd say like i was like you i'll be on motives yeah and i'll be fa- happy for five minutes but i'll just just be there like you weren't you were there but you weren't really there i wasn't there i was always thinking about stuff and it was just a whole bunch of stuff culminating that year yeah. like just a bunch of issues like throughout throughout my life in it so but i was still i was still like trying to understand islam more i was not actively learning it but i was just wherever i'd see i'd pick it up and like oh islam does that christianity doesn't ha- doesn't have that like like a lot of things islam had i craved it for christianity like remember we talked about salah like go five times a day to worship allah do you get what i mean like i wanted that in christianity like i was trying to do a thing where I pray three times a day. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But just like, it doesn't work because if you don't know what to say and you don't know what to do and what time to do, it's like, is there really like a, can you really do yeah. it kind of thing? I think another thing I noticed about you, you started, um, I mean, you never ate pork, right? You never really, but you were more strict on it now. I was more, sh- I was strict on it probably after I became Unitarian as well. Yeah. yeah. In a sense, like if Christianity doesn't allow it, if Islam doesn't allow it, if Judaism, Judaism doesn't allow yeah. it, why does new age Christianity allow it? Do you get what I mean? Like, I remember the last time I ate pork was 2019 because I went to Italy. Because yeah. I can't lie, uh, well, I'm going to say it's mad, but there is actually decent. I can't <laughs> lie. Like, yeah. I'll be real. Like, yeah, yeah. 
What yeah. I, if if any Muslims like want to know? It just tastes like you know the beef from GDK <laughs> in Italy. The one does it, in does it taste like that? It tastes exactly like that. Okay, bro. Yeah, like the way it's oily and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know if I can say this, but if it tastes like that, yeah, it tastes stuff good. Allah, stuff for Allah, stuff for Allah, <laughs> stuff yeah. for Allah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the last time I ha- had it. Yeah, and even one time, yeah, I remember it was me and Nadim and Sami. We went to the you know the canteen, yeah, mm. and there was nothing to eat, and then I was thinking like. It hurt me so much to just get signed. That was like a sausage-based thing. Even Nadim was like, stuff for Allah, stuff yeah. for Allah. Yeah. And I was thinking like, oh, I don't even want to eat this, but I had to eat it because yeah. I was h- bare hungry that day. So yeah. I never drank in my life. I never smoked. Know. Yeah. And the the reasons why is because, bro, I saw my, my uncle died of alco- alcoholism. He actually died only a couple, maybe a year or two ago, 2022, May. But you could see the effects from the when health, I was a kid. Yeah, Do you yeah. get what I mean? And smoking, yeah, like, like I've just seen it throughout my family. I was not saying I want to do it. So yeah. a lot of these things, and even drugs, you you get told from young that like, drugs are just bad, and you see why. So like a lot of these things, I didn't like, and I didn't really. There was not fit enough for me. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. The last. So yeah. So that was um, with me. Like my kind of lifestyle was kind of already halal in a sense, and yeah. And then there was one time, yeah, I was scrolling on TikTok, yeah, and it's mad. But there was this thing, it was about um, every time you do something, you get a good deed. Or something very small in it. And I was thinking, like, Islam has, like, a kind of point system. It sounds mad, but yeah. in my head, I was thinking, yeah. yeah, it's like, how can you, like, it's like a general guideline. And that, for me, was like, yo, like, I want this in Christianity. How can I not know if I give charity how many good deeds I get or how many, like... If that's gonna help me, do you get what I mean? So it's something so straight and it's so clear. Like these are the guidelines; don't yeah. cross them. Yeah, it's so like it, it's that obviously there's that if you cross the gu- guidelines, there's rahma and Allah will forgive you. But it's like do this, don't do that. And I think for a lot of people, some people just struggle with discipline and authority in their life. But I think most humans they crave that. Yeah. So when when Allah says in the Quran, if you do this, you will have barakah in it and you have blessings. If you do this, I'm gonna punish you for this. Yeah. It's like, that's how human, bro, that's how we deal with stuff. Like, for example, if there's um like early humans, yeah, if there was like a thorn in the bush, yeah, and you touch it and it pricks you, like, ah, you will never do it again. Yeah. It's the same with Islam. Allah said, you do this, you get punished, so don't do it. And you mm. n- not do it. Not like, and uh, again, I don't want to criticize Christianity because we have a lot of Christians, friends, and well, like, I generally, like, I respect Christianity. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of beautiful things about their religion. But I feel like, because it's so much focused on God is loving, God is lo- loving, that, when little stuff happens to someone in life, yeah. for example, how the the trial that Allah brought to you of yeah. your mother passing away, yeah. I think because it was Christianity in specific that you guys were following at the time, yeah. you didn't know how to really deal with it. Exactly. Because if if you're always saying, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. Then why do you take away my mom? Yeah, exactly. Like you think, that, and, uh, why are you taking away my wife? Do you get what I mean? So it's like, why has this happened to me? And in Islam, as you said, um, God doesn't love everyone. Do you get what I mean? So it's like a thing. No, like, no, no, that. But like in Islam, it's like Allah could do something that you would think, why Allah do something so horrible to me? And it's a blessing. Like look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah. The most greatest man that's ever walked this earth. And you share something in common with him. His mother passed away as well. Yeah. His father passed away. His granddad passed away. Mm-hmm. No one can compare their trials to him. Yeah. And Allah loved him so much. Allah loved him so much. Allah gave direct revelation. He sent his angel to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Allah loved him so much. The Prophet ﷺ saw Allah. Obviously, there was a hijab in between. Yeah. But the Prophet ﷺ saw Allah. So, that's why like, Islam, bro, like, it addresses all of this. It addresses every you know problem. I mean? There's It's structured. There's no like gray areas. There's no... It's a boundary that you go and you stick with it. Do you get what yeah. I mean? And that's, that's the whole thing with Christianity in the sense that Bro, let's. Uh, uh, there's. I'm gonna list quite a few things that with with Christianity, I I just didn't just like. Can't say see eye to eye with, but I just didn't yeah. understand. And I didn't like. Firstly, with the Quran, yeah, and the Bible, the Quran has never been changed. Direct word of God. We know the chain. It's you know you can't disprove it. You, you can like, have millions of people have memorized it. Yeah. One person changes an. Ele- You've been in the masjid during Ramadan. Yeah. You know when their mom makes a mistake. Yeah. You have little kids, five year old, six year old kids. I swear, I was in a masjid once. It was a seven, eight year old kid. Yeah. Yeah. And he corrected like he the corrected imam. a mistake in Surah Baqarah. I was like, what is going on? Like, I felt guilty because I'm like, I don't even know the mistake he made, and a little kid is correcting him. Exactly. So. 
the the Quran that you can't disprove it. But with Christianity, the Bible, like, let's be real, yeah. I'm gonna say it, and no Christians attack me. But the Bible has been changed multiple, multiple, multiple times. It's a fact. You can't like <laughs> it. even even things with about like even like what you know what's happening in the West with the whole de- degeneracy thing. Yeah, these lot are like you know, changing it to fit their agenda. Do you get what I mean? So everyone's changing the Bible to fit their agenda. And I I, I, I thought like, how can I believe in a religion where the, the the holy book, the scripture, the thing that I'm meant to base my whole life around is changing. <laughs> yeah. How can, Islam has never been changed at all, ever. And um, the Quran has been the same from when, you know, the first revelations came down to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until now, do you get what I mean? people have memorized it and just it's you know subhanallah for it do you get what i mean yeah and i used to see christianity i'll be real as a broken religion how can you have your main scripture and it's not there and i used to try and logicize it in my head like oh it's just a new time it's just whatever whatever but then at the end of the day how can god be all powerful but then he lets his book like and what's crazy you have different for example in islam you have sunni shia you have all these sects there every single one has one quran you look at Christianity, you look at Catholicism, you have Protestant, they have different number of Bibles. Yeah, I even asked you, yeah. why does uh, Ukrainian Orthodox here yeah, have 72 books in the Bible, but Catholicism have 56 or 54? It's crazy difference. And, and Protestantism has, I think, 46. My numbers might be wrong here, but it's a general, if you look at books of the Bible on Wikipedia, you'll see one orthodox i think maybe ukraine has 73 books bro you know what's scary as well there's the, we know for a fact there were gospels that were taken out yeah gospel, gospel of, of thomas. thomas yeah you know what's so crazy with the gospel of thomas yeah when i found this out shivers went down my back it meant it mentions that isa Islam spoke in the cradle yeah. is you know before um the quran came no christians believed that yeah that isa Islam spoke in the cradle they found an anonymous gospel that the the, the prophet never would have known it was found somewhere deep in egypt yeah, yeah. and they said that he spoke of a cradle it mentioned that Isa Salam was not son of, it explicitly called him a prophet in the Gospel of Thomas. That's mad. And so why did I get phased out? Do you get yeah. what I mean? It's, it's crazy. It's the thing with the whole history of the Romans. The Romans loved the number three. Yeah. If you see the history of the Romans, yeah. three, three, three everywhere. Yeah. So and they used to worship the sun god. Yeah, yeah. Then they yeah. changed it to the son of God. Son of God, yeah. And then they made three, one into three or three into one, whatever. Even Christmas, bro, it comes from uh, the something winter solstice or well, something solstice yeah. yeah yeah so there's a lot of paganism and whatnot like paganism and christianity fused you know it, uh, paganism tried to fuse with islam but islam repelled it do you know Strong, what i mean yeah so yeah so we talk about you know the holy scripture then we talk about how you know you know how does ramadan in christianity you're meant to actually fast lent you're meant to fast from sunset to sunrise uh, sunrise to sunset yeah orthodox christians do it nowadays but even now yeah i, I had one of my colleagues yeah back in the day when they used to work here yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> work there yeah they um two years ago it was different rules to now to this year do you get what i mean so it's like how are you changing all the time kind of thing so and even i look at um the changes that were made by the the catholic um headquarters in america yeah they changed in the 1960s for Christianity and Catholicism, what you should do in Lent. And even when, back in the day, everyone would worship that way yeah. for um, on in a church. Yeah. But then, you know, the priest is now facing towards you. Before yeah. I used to, everyone used to pray. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. And then one minor thing, yeah, was that Muslims pray towards Mecca in it. Yeah. And I was thinking, Christian, Christian, Christianity needs to have that. Subhanallah, I look into it, they used to do it. Pray to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah. Then it was to the east. Then it was the east side of the room. So imagine you walk out this room, you have to pray this way as a Christian. So I tried to I tried to my last days of Christianity before I became Muslim, I was trying to do all these things. It's like a thing where you try to salvage Christianity. Like yeah. I tried to salvage it by doing all these things. I used to wash myself before I pray. Yeah. Even yeah. that thing, like yeah. there's so many things that Islam had that I wanted to have in Christianity, but it just, you know then you you wake up one day you realize i'm making christianity into islam <laughs> you I'm, literally make it into that yeah i might as well convert and then yeah. subhanallah i converted um february 12 2022 and alhamdulillah best decision but one thing yeah not gone one thing that i'd say is that 
So I was in my, I was in this kind of depressed phase, yeah, in year one of uni, yeah, and um, I was, and t- I had a lot of Islamic things on my TikTok, the whole de- good deeds thing, and then there was one time, I don't know what it was, because I'm not gonna come here and lie and say I remember the video, but I, I looked at it, yeah, then I shut down my phone, and then I looked, to, and I remember I was on my sofa, yeah, it was summer, it's sunny outside, I was thinking, why don't I just become Muslim? Allah. Yeah, July, June time, maybe one. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Why don't I just become Muslim? And then the Shaitan got to me. and was like, Astaghfirullah is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a real prophet? And I was thinking, okay, maybe not. And then Astaghfirullah, I was like, okay, cool, no. But I feel like at that time, if I did convert, I maybe would have not been here today in the sense like I might have reverted back to Christianity in the sense that. Like there was a lot of splits in that friendship group at that time, in it, and yeah. um, ev- n- no one was really proper. Like everyone, was, like people were Muslim, but no one was proper. Like I think, especially during that time, you know what happened that summer. Yeah, a lot of us had weak iman. Yeah, obviously that was that was during that time where that was a development for like me and a few other friends where we were like, bro, we were like um, involved in the fitna during that time. Yeah, and our iman was really weak. So like you converting to Islam during that time, God Allah, obviously Allah knows what would have, have yeah. happened. But for you wouldn't have that strong basis of friends on the Deen that would have helped you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Allah delayed it until QM and yeah, was, yeah. So then I went Queen Mary, and um, I wanted to. I always wanted to go to a uni with majority Muslims. Cause my my friends, you know, you lot before I went to uni all Muslims. So I, I wanted that familiarity. And that will, that has to be a sign because how can I not? I, I didn't want to chill with Christians. I didn't want to chill with like white people. I wanted just chill with any Muslims I could, any yeah. friends that were Muslim. Yeah. Do you get what yeah. I mean? So I went uni and alhamdulillah, all, every friend I made at uni is Muslim. Some Christian here and there, some uh, non Muslim, whatever. But m- like I'd say 99% of the people I know at uni are Muslim, innit? The reason why I wanted is because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do madness, I don't. Like, I don't do all this mad stuff yet. So I was thinking, like, I want to be with people who don't indulge in that kind of lifestyle, innit? And so I used to ask a lot of questions in uni to Muslims as well. Do you get what I mean? And when, one of my boys, yeah, that we've had actually disagreements in the past, yeah. But then, like, we came year three of uni. We like, we're like, yo, just, we're good again, innit? He was like, oh, I could tell from the start you were going to convert because you, you were interested in it and whatnot. So... People saw it from the start, innit? From when I met them at uni, yeah? And then people used to ask, oh, when you convert, when you convert? And I was like, inshallah, one day, inshallah, one day. So it's already kind of in your head. Yeah, but at that time, I didn't believe in it. Yeah. But I was thinking, you know what? Who knows, innit? So yeah, then, yeah. And then alhamdulillah, when I did become Muslim, um, as I previously mentioned, Hadefa um, and a couple of the other men, like, you know, supporting me bears. They even uh, did a revert party for me. Do you yeah, get what I mean? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, All on um, Abu Tarab's TikTok, yeah, yeah, a year ago, I think, yeah. yeah. And and then people were, like, getting me gifts and, like, alhamdulillah, a lot of these stuff. And then, like, it, the support I got when I when I became Muslim was crazy. Just before that, what was the last push? Because you're, you're to the point now where you're like, I wish I was Muslim yeah. and you're loving these acts of Islam. Yeah. But what's that part where you're like, okay, I love this religion to I actually believe in it. Because this, I, I know a lot of people personally um, where they love Islam. I know some non-Muslim friends uh, who like, they, they generally like Islam. They like the structure it offers, but I don't really believe in it. What kind of got you to that point where you went from, I love this religion and I really like the, the, the community part of it. Yeah. What actually made you believe in it? So, I, I believed in, you know, one God. I believed in, you know, I, I believed after after I got to uni, I started seeing like I started hearing a lot of things of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. I was like, SubhanAllah, what an amazing man and like guide and whatever. So it's I think it was a combination of the sense that, you know, I literally believed in Shahada. I I also there was also like someone tried to, you know that extra push that people give like oh someone's on the verge of converting to some and they they died the next day do you get what yeah, I mean yeah yeah they're always true stories as well like people think they're made up but they're actually no true it stories. happens it happens it was that as well and I was thinking you know what yeah I'd rather confirm it maybe take time to get on it to get on it but I'd rather become Muslim than not Muslim and if I die I die kind of thing do you get what I mean and yeah. I used to ask people like oh what happens if it takes me 20-30 years to you know, become religious. They were like, "Oh, you st- 
eventually you become it and you you become pious and inshallah you get to Jannah. Do you get what I mean? Inshallah. So yeah. And then yeah, and then I tell I call you. That was such a weird time for me. Yeah, it was crazy. That was I remember, yeah. Because I was at uni at the time and we would talk from time to time, but it was it wasn't a lot. Yeah. We would, we would talk from on WhatsApp group chats. Well. Stop a lot, yeah. And I remember I just got a call from you one day and just at this point in my life I was going through like a very hard time. Mm-hmm. I was like Was this the was it this when I said I'm going to become Muslim or was this when I said I became Muslim? Because there were two different calls. I think you said, bro, I think I'm gonna become Muslim. Yeah. This is around February time. And at, at this point I wasn't the dean. Like, this was February twenty twenty two. February twenty two. I think it was February eighth or ninth. I think like two Something, days later yeah. I just converted. Yeah. And you were like, bro, I'm thinking of becoming Muslim. I was like, subhanAllah. But you know, it was so weird because it's something I would have dreamed of. But at the time, I won't lie to you, because I was in such a bad state, it didn't hit me like that. Yeah. But where, like, if now, for example, you said it to me now, I'd be like, yo, blah, blah, I would like, take you out somewhere, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that. But at the time, it didn't hit me because I'm such a, I had no connection to Dean back then. Yeah, yeah. But like, you're still saying, Allahumma barak. Uh, Allahumma barak. Because I know, I know, like, the basic words. <laughs> no, not, not even that. Like, I knew because I wasn't on Dean at the time yeah. and I was going for a hard time, but I knew Islam is the answer. Like, I, I was going for problems and I know Islam's the answer to my problems. I just struggled to get to that. Yeah, to that me. stage, yeah. Yeah. And so like, I was like, yo, Pablo, like, Allah, my birthday, everything. And I was so happy, but it just, it didn't hit as I thought it would have at yeah. the time. And then, um, I think you, you, so you told me I'm thinking about it, but you never actually told me I did it. Yeah. It was, that was only until after I saw you. And then, I, and I remember, I oh know we went on another call and then this is, this time I had converted, yeah. But I didn't tell you. You hadn't told me I yet. I hadn't yeah. told you. And we're just talking about, we're talking about marriage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like yeah. we always do, bro. Yeah. And we're just talking about marriage, marriage, marriage. Yeah. And then, yeah. We, and then after that, we didn't really talk that much, yeah. The thing is, that when everyone goes uni, no one actually talks to each other. Like, you talk to the people at uni, but you don't really talk to the people no. back home. And it, it's just the way uni is, isn't it? So then, you know what, yeah. Um, it was this, this weekend, yeah. And I remember I had my source analysis due, yeah. And I was like, okay, t- this weekend I'm gonna tell everyone. So I told you, I told Ahad, I told Nadim, I told my dad, I told, I think I told, I think I told Qasim as well. I told bare people that I knew close. I was like, yo, I'm Muslim, this and that and the third, this, yeah. So yeah, I, I I was just making calls, making calls, and th- that's it. I remember I telling you, yeah. I know you were happy, but of course you were going through stuff, and like, of course that whatever you were going through that time was more important than. No, not whatever. not even like that. But you know, like I wanted to be happy for you, but you know when you're just feeling down, like yeah. you, you can't fake. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's yeah. you can't fake being happy. It's like, oh, like I really want to be happy for this guy right now, but I'm going through such a like dark period. What like how do I react to it? Do yeah. you know what I mean? So and then I told. Um, I had, I think he had, I'll be real, he had the best reaction. Yeah, the best reaction, yeah, He's yeah. like, no way, boss, <laughs> <laughs> No joke. The I had reaction, yeah. I had reaction, yeah. I was like, yeah, I became it. And then we were like, for an hour and a half, we were talking, talking, talking. And it was like, bro, my Muslim brother now, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like, we were close now. Yeah. No, you said it, we were close now, but now you're, we're closer. Friend. Yeah, of course, we were brothers now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then um, Nadim was like, oh, like, boss, like, I'm so happy. Yeah. I kind of expected it because once we went on a motive two weeks after I became Muslim but like a week or so before I told him yeah, yeah. and it was Sami it was Nadim and his, um, another brother yeah not Muslim but yeah so we're there and then I didn't have my chains on because you know the infamous chains yeah, yeah, and that yeah the Christian chains yeah, yeah two of them as well bro. Yeah. I thought I was jipped out on that yeah, yeah. I was like oh he, Sami asked where do you, where what happened to the chains I was like oh I don't know I'm a bit sceptical on Christianity yeah and then he was like, I kind of realized that you are not rating Christianity because you, you took off your chains. I was like, oh, you're very, you know, you can caught see on, stuff in it. On like you that, can yeah. catch on to many yeah. things, innit? So yeah, I told them and yeah, alhamdulillah, all good reactions. You get what I mean? You know what's crazy? You know when it really hit me, yeah? And I think this is such a powerful moment because may Allah reward you for this. I mean. um, but during that like dark time, I remember if Ramadan came. And obviously mm. Ramadan, you try to get more practicing and I was praying now and I was fasting, 
But Ramadan hadn't hit like that yet. And I remember you used to ask me, Ali, let's go Tarawih. I remember yeah. the first few times I dodged it. Yeah. Something in my heart was like, I don't want to go Tarawih. Was like, it after you we went to Taste Allah? Um, I can't remember fully, bro. I'll be oh, honest. okay. But I remember you used to ask me, let's go Tarawih. And the first day I dodged it. And then you kept asking me. And I think the third, fourth day I went with you, yeah. yeah? And I went, I was like, yo, like, this Tarawih is so nice, yeah? And then slowly, slowly, I think one thing I deeped is like, you were like doing all your tarawees and you're doing like eight, 20 rakats, yeah? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I was born Muslim. What? I'm not doing anything, yeah? And I was looking at you. I was like, this is so inspirational. And I remember my friend Ahad as well. who was another brother converted yeah, during yeah. this Aye. similar time. Literally, the the day before Ramadan, this this guy yeah. we knew converted. And yeah. we will not say much yet, but back in the day, I remember when we went Rorik, Ahad and this brother were on a call. And he was like, oh, God doesn't exist. That stuff for like, yeah. even a couple months back, maybe November time, yeah, I was like, yeah. on God, on God. Because that was the Christian way of saying, well, why he in it? He was like, what's that? What's that? So like, yeah. and then he becomes Muslim like four or five months later. SubhanAllah, it's crazy. I remember me and Ahad were on a call, yeah. This must have been like early first 10 days of Ramadan yeah. of 2022. And we were like, bro, these both these guys are Muslim. Like, we're lying. Like, what are we doing? We're losers right now. Because we wore Ramadan, but we weren't taking Ramadan proper seriously. And then I think that Ramadan was like one of the best Ramadans of my life, if not yeah. the best. Because I remember, like, as I think we we're all slowly on our journeys of getting onto Iman and also yeah. you became Muslim. But during those last like 15, 20 nights, when we, like, that, that friendship group became united upon Islam. Yeah. Remember, we we're going on motors, we we're going tarawees, and we we're all going together. And it was just so beautiful. I remember me and you we were going ELM. Yeah, and those both we those would tarawees. stay from Maghrib to yeah. Fajr time, even even up until uh, Shuruq, in it. Like yeah. we would just stay the whole yeah. night. Yeah, it's crazy. Subhanallah. I, I, you know, I always said one thing. Like I was always intellectually in love with Islam. Like for me, it just makes it, this religion makes so much sense. Like I'll be honest, no other religion really makes sense to me because they all believe in these like weird ideas. Yeah, Islam is like. You it's don't so need practical. no statue, you know, no idol, you need not that this is the thing I love about Islam. I don't need to worship an idol. It's like God should be able to see me wherever I am. Yeah. He doesn't need me to worship an idol. He doesn't need me to say Hail Mary. Yeah. Like, I can just worship him directly. Exactly. It's like a very like close relationship with God, yeah. So always intellectually I loved it. That spirituality, it was kind of lacking a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it was more logical. I I would even say, like I agree with you in the sense that when you used to debate. It was very logical, logical, and logical. You have to be logical, but you also have that need that, that, that emotional, emotional side. side. Yeah, and I feel like that Ramadan, as you say, you, you kind of got that emotional side. Something finally hit my heart. Yeah, where it's like I think that was a f- those that second year of uni was the first time I actually went for trial in my life. Yeah, and I feel like the way that Allah like put my heart at ease. I was like, yo, like. This bridge is beautiful. Like it, I felt so depressed, and it just lifted my heart. I never felt like that. I felt, but it's it's like I felt high. Yeah, I was in a constant state of high, but I wasn't even doing drugs. I was just praying. And those when I was in those salahs, I remember telling you I felt like I was in a different dimension. I've yeah. never that spirituality. I felt that iman. I felt. I remember I was in salah and I was praying tarawih. Twenty record rakats went like that, and I genuinely felt like I was surrounded by angels, like everywhere. Subhanallah. And I've never had feelings like that. And. I think emotionally, I got really connected. Now, a lot of that was due to you, yeah? Because I was like, if he's going to Tarawih, I have to go. Yeah. Do you get me? I used to talk to you about Islam. Allah. How am I going to be a hypocrite and not, when you ask me to come to Tarawih, not come with you? Yeah. So like, yeah, subhanAllah, this is all up to Allah, how, yeah. you know, things work. You used to preach to me about Islam, debate, and now- the and when then, I needed it, and then, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So subhanAllah for it, do you get what I mean? I feel like that Ramadan was legendary. <laughs> Everyone got on Dean. Like everyone, okay, I'd say I'll be real. From about February twelfth to the start of Ramadan, which was the start of April, yeah, I was Muslim, but I wasn't really like like I was praying probably three four times a day. Like if it, people go at uni to pray, and um, so if I was at uni, I was pray with the man them in it, and that's it. I didn't pray Fajr them times in it, and then you know, and because I, I had the excuse of like you know you're learning and whatnot, yeah. so I was like, okay, cool, I take it slow and that. So yeah, and then that that Ramadan came. I was like, you know what? I want to go Tarawih. And then you know, you co- you come back to the Dean, and then two other man like who were off the Dean or lacking in man, they they came back to the Dean. Yeah, they came back to the Dean. So Subhanallah, that um, Ramadan was legendary. And then beautiful. Yeah, I feel like me and also our friend Ahad. Yeah, we talk yeah. about it all the time. During that Ramadan, we're going like two hour calls, but we just talk 
every single minute of that course is about Islam. Yeah. And because we both went through a very hard time during that time, we're talking about how like, Allah blessed us. You know what's crazy? That, you know, Ramadan is really powerful. I left out Ramadan with even more in mind than inside the Ramadan. Yeah. That's how you know Ramadan's worked for you. Yeah. I remember I was like so motivated about Islam. I loved it so much. Um, but just on that, bro, obviously you had to come to a point where you had to tell your dad yeah. about you becoming Muslim. Yeah. That's, I can't, like, I can't imagine like, it must be so hard. So how did it go down with you and how was your dad's reaction towards you becoming Muslim? So, um, I can't lie. I was, I was a bit shook. I'll be real. Like, you know what? It's a big, it's a big thing to say in it. Do you get what I mean? And I'm not going to come up and say like, I didn't care. Like, of course I was, I was asking people and there was one of my boys, yeah, called uh, Khedin in it, yeah. Our German brother, my, my brother, yeah. He told me how to do it, yeah. Because I was thinking like, how do I do it? Do I write like a letter? Do I do this? Yeah. He said, sit him down, be like, this is the deal. He, he said it more like a blunt way, but yeah, like yeah. I kind of got like a gist yeah. of what he's saying, yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let me, let me do this, yeah. Okay, so I, I, um, he picked me up, yeah, from the station, yeah, Edgeware Station and that, yeah. And then, this is my dad I'm talking about, yeah. We drove home, yeah. And then I was just telling about uni and I was just saying, like, yeah, this and that and the further. And then I was like, okay, cool. I looked at him like this, yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, was like I was laughing, in it, yeah? Because yeah, it was just a bit of nerves and that, yeah. I was like, it's a man's Muslim, innit? Well, I didn't say man's Muslim, innit? I said it in Italian, yeah? He's like, yeah. oh, okay. And then he asked, like, why? And then I started explaining, Christianity doesn't make sense for me. Islam is the way, like um, Christianity's been changed. It's been this. It's been like all these kind of things here and there. Yeah, I was saying like for me, it just didn't make sense, and it's, I think Islam is the way for me. So I was like, okay, cool. And then he kind of he understood it. It was like, okay, cool. I understand. I was like, okay, cool. I need to go pray, do this, do that, and like he was like he he understood the kind of thing that I was but here and there yeah and of course as a non-muslim you ask questions of course like, man why do you do this why do you yeah. do that and then i think after he, it hit him he understood it he, uh, he he understood but then it hit him like he asked started asking questions here and then and then i'll respond oh okay because of this reason that reason like i'd always give an explanation and then um do you think it helped that your dad because obviously your dad had like a very nice reaction to it yeah. very respectful do you think it helped that he had Muslim friends in his life that he had good relationship with. Yeah, so he like a couple of the colleagues are Muslim. Um, so yeah, and there's friends and whatnot. And I feel like because of you know them being Muslim and being around it, because I also used to say the the old chef that he used to work with was Muslim in it. We always used to salam since 2021. Yeah, so it's early 2021, and we used to always salam and we used to say like Islamic words and that. Yeah, and then. He used to, my dad used to say Islamic words. Yeah, like, yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah, so he, he still says it, but he, he doesn't say it in like, Abu Ray doesn't say in a, in a good, in not in a good context, in a, like the right context. He'll just say it like randomly, yeah, it, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So yeah, he would, he, he'd say it and then he'll pick it up and then, so he'd, he, he was around that kind of Islamic culture and like whatnot. And so, but he would ask questions after I converted and because he had Muslim friends, he would ask them as well. And then he, they would give him a good response. So he, he kind of, you know, there was a good kind of reaction to it. So, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. And I feel like also the fact that he came away from Christianity kind of helped as well in the sense that he wasn't proper strict Christian. Because yeah. if you're a yeah. proper strict Christian, you'll, you'll go crazy. But you'll be like, what? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, but if you're like, I don't even know what, sometimes it's atheist, sometimes it's agnostic, sometimes yeah. he's Christian. Like, he's I don't still know. on his journey. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. So I don't know where he is at. So it's like, it was it was much easier. So alhamdulillah for that. Because I've heard stories bro, where like and even like because when i put my um phobes in the wash and whatnot you get what i mean like he doesn't throw them away he doesn't do anything he's just if it's his time to put them on you know to dry them he'll dry them he won't say anything he'll just be like calm do you get what i mean like yeah some people throw some parents throw their kids away throw their camisas away their you know phobes or stuff don't let the them Quran. pray yeah. don't let them pray but i say these are the prayer times i even told him like yo when I come back from accommodation, I'm gonna pray at three, four, five, whenever Fajr is. Is that cool? You you can do whatever you want. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, alhamdulillah for it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like Allah bless you differently with that, because, and He made it. I'm not saying it was easy for you, because it was still hard. But yeah. a lot of people, were, like Allah has given them a trial. Their parents don't see eye to yeah. eye, and I feel like that's maybe one thing where Allah tried to ease in the burden. Of, yeah, yeah. 100%, and you know what? Bro. Obviously, you know, having a single dad. 
I think he must understand, bro. Like it's not been easy for you all these mm. years, and I think, he, bro, he probably appreciates you. Or at least he's got he's got something that he has meaning in. Yeah, you get me. He 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 says like one thing you you are g- good at is like your your discipline in Islam, your discipline in things because of he sees that after i became muslim i've become more disciplined. i noticed that you're a lot more disciplined than like before. work more yeah, i do yeah. this i do that back in the day i was the most undisciplined person do you yeah. know what i mean like that's, what, that's one thing i'll say islam's helped you for is i know it's, it's b- b- when you became muslim three four months later you start going gym again you start yeah. going gym you start a gym and i know it's just little things you're more like you're on your essays you're more disciplined um like now of course you're a lot more disciplined so i was yeah. like that's these are the effects that Islam has when you have to follow these ru- like rules and regulations mm-hmm. on a daily basis you have to wake up at 3 4 a.m bro and pray everything else is easy yeah. a- anyone knows like when you're first getting into praying your salah waking up fajr is hard yeah, yeah so once you do that anything else is easy do you know what I mean alhamdulillah that's the thing like um also about the salah thing it's like okay cool asr is at like 5 30 in it i pray asr and then let me do something for the podcast or one after hour after Asr, I'll, I'll like hit up weights and stuff. Like, like my life is around the prayer times. Yeah. The like I'll be like, okay, cool. Up until three a.m. today, because of Fajr times, I'm going to, you know, focus on editing the podcast. I'm going to focus on getting supplies. Like my life literally revolves around the it, salah. and it. Alhamdulillah for it. Do you get what I mean? And you know what? It's the best decision that I've ever done. Do you get what I mean? Alhamdulillah. And I can see as a friend, bro. The way it's impacted you, you're so mm. much more mature now. Yeah. And I feel like before, you know, one thing is we would like have motives, yeah? Because you're like, oh, what are we doing with our life? We just do a motive, like, oh, I'm just bored. And I feel like it's given you a lot more direction. Yeah. Where you now know you want to do. And in terms of like, now that you're Muslim, bro, you know, I need to get married. Yeah. You get, like, I think a lot of young <laughs> Muslims our age, we have that now, yeah? Yeah. And it gives you something to focus on. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it also focuses on, um, on er- not just getting married or... Oh, you want like we we're talking about giving sadaqah as well. Like yeah. we have, we have to try and get money to do that, or like do like a lot of things because of the structure and what Islam, you know, prohibits and allows. You, know, you have to be disciplined. Islam is a complete way of life. Physically, you have like a Prophet Sallallahu said, the strong believers been the weak believers. So you have to get strong now. Yeah. Right? The Prophet Sallam used to practice wrestling, swimming, archery. So like sports, you're meant to do as a Muslim, yeah. And then little things like. The way you walk to the toilet, bro. In everything, Islam, like, it's so, like, you know, normal people have to stress about this type of stuff, yeah? Like, oh, is this right? No, like, I know what I'm doing is right because Allah said it's right. Do you know what I mean? And so, like, it gives you so much ease in your heart because you know I'm not following guidance from some random brother. I'm following guidance from Rabbil Alameen. Like, he controls everything. So, I know whatever I do, I know it's right. For the best, for for my best, kind of. Yeah. And a lot of all the scientific miracles, you know, about the way the world is and whatever. There's so many miracles in the Quran from, you know, food to the landscape to everything. that, And, you know, biology and stuff like what now science is learning, what, 50, the last 50 years. Do you get what I mean? But so, little stuff like the Prophet taught us to clean your bums yeah. properly, yeah? But some people still don't do that, yeah? So imagine a f- man 1,400 years ago in the desert. Do you know what's desert. mad? Yeah. I, I done it... W- Years before I became Muslim. SubhanAllah. Probably eight, think, nine years ago. Well, if you didn't clean your bum properly, I wouldn't be friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, it's a big thing, bro. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Like, I, the way I, I, I was thinking, how am I using tissue paper? I'm not, not trying to move mad yet, but it's, it'd still be there, bro. You know, there's a perfect example. Drop cake on your shirt, clean it with tissue paper, let's see if it works. Yeah. It's not going to work, bro. Exactly. So how, when you've got feces on your thing. And that's even like worse. That's a hundred times worse. You know, it's crazy how like we're so advanced and yeah. certain people st- still haven't got that. Yeah. And they know. think we're backwards. It's mad. It's, it's crazy. So yeah, you know, I became Muslim. It was what? Ramadan time. Alhamdulillah, it was good. Then, you know what? I was on my journey and I feel like, I'd say last summer was probably, because I was going on a walk with one of my boys and it was like last summer was probably where you're most consistent in the sense like you were proper like, religious you got onto your dean and stuff and i feel like when i went back to uni i feel like with university it kind of strips away your your iman do you get what i mean like like you know what i was alhamdulillah I was muslim still praying five times a day and you know what but because of uni yeah and the trials and tribulations that uni brings and you know what you, you're in an environment yeah where even if you're with mandem yeah, you still forget about islam and allah yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah so yeah and then there was a there was a week in November time yeah where my Iman was the strongest it had ever been like yeah. 
if I could ask for that one week for the rest of my life, that's the one. Yeah. Forget about the podcast. Forget about yeah, yeah. making money. Forget about everything. That week, I would love to experience again. Yeah, for the rest of my life, and I, I experienced that. But then, you know, you 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 like sin and stuff, and then it kind of that iman kind of yeah. strips away from me, yeah. and I feel like that was just a tester, like taster of what Allah could give me if I'm if I'm so hyper focus on it and inshallah i'm trying to get back to it like i like since the self improvement thing my as i said before my iman tawakkal and you know sabah have have improved but not to the extent of yeah, that yeah. time yeah but it's it's get inshallah it's getting there do you get what i mean so you know when your iman is so high and your spirituality is like so high bro it's like nothing just phases you and you're constantly like i remember bro i'd just be sitting on a bus here my mind is so high and almost tears would come out of my eye. I'm just looking at the window. Look how everything Allah has created. Yeah. And the fact that he's created me and he's looking over me, I just feel so safe. Like even now, bro, doing this podcast, yeah? People can say whatever they want. But I know like Allah is watching over me. Yeah. And he's just like, he's, he's constantly, I remember, I, I, I keep bringing this up, but like no one's there for you except Allah. Exactly. And when you, you know, you feel just so comfortable knowing Allah is like, looking over me and whenever you're praying bro you know like i am literally praying to, like to the f- one who created all of this and who can change my life in a second just like that yeah subhanallah it's, the thing is we don't deep it and i feel like even sometimes we we um take salah for granted yeah. even one of the biggest reasons i became muslim yeah Sometimes I take it for granted. I'm just quickly praying. Sometimes you just do a quick salah and it's like a chore kind of thing. But yeah. it should never be like that. It should be a pleasure. Yeah. It should be a thing where we look forward to every salah. And there was like there was a point I was like I was looking at the hours like please just come salah time, salah time. Like now it comes, I'm like, yeah, alhamdulillah for it. But it's it's not a thing where I was so etching for it. Do you get what I mean? And inshallah we get to a point where we're like that. Do you get it's it's always a journey. Like I found Islam. But you still have to always you have to find it again. Do you get what I mean? And it's always, it's a constant journey, and you'll never be the the final product, kind of. Yeah. Thing. But inshallah, Allah keeps steadfast in this you know journey. I think one last thing I just want to end this podcast on. Yeah. Is that there might be people watching this and they they're like you know what I'm struggling right now I'm trying to get on my trying to get on my dean and yeah they're taking a lot of inspiration from you and they're like you know how do I get on my dean? One thing I'd say. And it's the most important thing, and it's something that I've taken because I I have dips in my iman. We all do. We all do. One thing I've noticed: that you keep your salah consistent. Your like your Islam is like a house. The foundation is your salah. Yeah. Your salah falters a little bit, the entire house will come down. Exactly. You miss one salah, and you know it's like oh, if I miss a salah here and there, it's not deep. I've like if you miss one salah, bro, your entire like routine gets affected. Your your entire like iman gets affected. Yeah. You could do craziness, bro. Like, you could like be drinking, be smoking weed. Never feel shy to have your meeting with Allah, because then yeah. you have your meeting with Allah. Just like it's a chance for forgiveness, like, and and it's a chance where like you can talk to Him, and any issues you're going through right now, yeah. when you're praying, it's like it's just that moment. Life is so busy nowadays. It's that moment where you can just relax and talk to your Creator and just like empty yourself out. Do you get yeah. what I mean? So like. Salah just keeps you away from so much evil and it brings so much ease into your life. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I'd say. Is just make sure that salah is consistent. A hundred percent. Salah has to be the main thing. Has to be. Even if you're doing madness with girls or doing madness with boys or you're you're smoking or you're drinking or you're sinning or any type of sin, yeah, always focus on salah. Never neglect salah because salah will help you get out of that. Maybe it might not take weeks, it might take months, it might take years, but if you keep consistent, the salah will, you know, ch- like kind of, you know, smooth out those rough edges is in, in your life kind of thing. And yeah. it's so important because if you're always salah, always on like praying, praying salah, and then you're doing all these things, you're going to start being more God conscious, more more conscious, like I'm upsetting my Lord, I'm doing this, I'm sinning, I'm doing this. Then you're going to start slowly stopping sins here and there. Do you get what I mean? So yeah, you always keep, the salah close to whatever you do plan your day around salah and you'll find yeah that you have so much barakah so much, like yeah. have you noticed when you pray when you pray always on time yeah like you can get so much more stuff done yeah. it's like when you when like you've delayed a prayer yeah it's like it feels like there's no time it makes left. you more lazy it's yeah like when you delay a salah it's like 
okay, I delayed it for this, but I literally got nothing done. So why yeah. did I even delay it in the first place? Exactly. Or you might be on your phone just scrolling on TikTok. Like, you know, what? It's, it's like Allah saying, okay, you want to delay the salah because I'll you think there's better life. stuff to do. I'm, whatever you wanted to do, there'll be no benefit in it. It's like Allah teaching, you know, it's, and it's, we talked about this today, yeah? It's like, we've been having issues maybe with the pod, yeah? And we've been thinking like, why is Allah doing to us? Maybe one of us sinned. Yeah. And we're having all these technical issues, yeah? And it's so beautiful because that, this, well, like us having all these issues, the podcast right now, we might, like it might cause us stress right now, but it's like Allah trying to like, poke at us, trying to tell us, fix up. Yeah, fix it's, up. Trying to, it's trying to remind us. And you know, that's one good thing is that we, we understand like, well, maybe the reason why it's not working is not just random technical issues. It's no. Allah. It all, nothing is random in this. We're not atheists, yeah? Yeah. And anything that happens, either Allah's blessing you or he's punishing you. Yeah. There's no in between. He doesn't just let stuff happen. There's, Something behind everything. Remember the first four episodes, there yeah. was no issues at all. Yeah. So, so we, we come to a cl- conclusion that something must have happened. You get We've done mean? something and it's affected it. Yeah, exactly. I mean? And we have to work out what it yeah. is. And then when we work out what it is, we, we do things to, you know, try and ease that problem kind of thing. So, yeah, Salah, just never neglect it and always think of Allah in everything you do. So, yeah. Okay. Bro, like this episode, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Because I feel like, I've heard your reverse story, but there's some stuff in here that even I didn't know. Really, yeah. So it's been nice to uh, listen to. Yeah. But you know what? I think it's time to call into the podcast. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the last, you'll get it next time, bro. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs>